All right, so let's start working on um, a past final exam from here. So I'm just gonna pull out a one from my website. So let's look at, um, uh, let's do spring 2018. So composition of functions. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at this final exam, but this is a good one to work on. Um, so Lisette, uh, take a look at question 18. Is that something you wanna work on? So that yeah. Part? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yep, that one. All right, so let me take that to my OneNote and then we'll do um, part A and B for 18. All right. Okay, so let me just share my screen. Okay, so let's work on this problem. So we are working on spring 2018 final. So this is spring 2018. Okay, so for this question, so you're given two functions, f and g, and you want to find the following compositions. So for part a, we are going to compose g of f of 3 over 2. So you're actually going to input a real number into the function f, and then whatever result you get, you're going to plug it into g. So we're going to do the inner function first. So let's evaluate this piece first. So let g be waiting outside, and we're going to figure out what f of 3 half will give us. So f is this function. So we're going to plug in 3 half into f so we'll have three half minus one over three half plus one so i replace three half everywhere there is an x for the function f and now you just simplify this so from prerequisite section if you guys recall we did combining fractions so so let's do three half minus one what is three half minus one so i'm working with this piece first so you need common denominators, right? So three half minus one, let's rewrite one as a fraction and then multiply with two over two. So you have three half minus two over two, which is one half. So the top fraction gives us one half. Now what about the bottom fraction? You do the same thing. You wanna do three half plus one. So we do three over two plus one, write one as a fraction and multiply by the LCD, which is two. So that gives us three over two plus two over two, that's five over two. So we have five over two at the bottom. And now you wanna do kip flip change for the two fractions inside. So we have, so G is still waiting outside. So one half times five times two over five. So the two cancels out, you get one fifth. And now that's the new input for the function g. And what is g going to do? Well, g is going to square it and add 1 to it. So we're going to do 1 fifth square plus 1. So that would be 1 over 25 plus 1. Again, we need common denominators to add these numbers. So we write 1 as a fraction, multiply with 25 over 25. So we have 1 over 25 plus 25 over 25, and indeed we have 26 over 25. So that's your evaluation for g of f of 3 half. Any questions on this? Does it make sense? Yes, I, I understand. But what about when it's like g, instead of uh, f to g's, and instead of uh, the g to f's, how will you do that? Well, so like for the part B, right? You're doing f of g of x, right? So now if because the input is x, the result you get will be at, in terms of x, okay? So let's do part B now. So let me just go ahead and rewrite the function. So we have f of x, which is x minus 1 over x plus 1. 
and g of x is x squared plus 1. And we want to do the composition f of g of x. So f of g of x. Well, now because the inside is x, our result should also contain x at the end, not a real number. It's just an expression. So what this means is you take the function g, which is this piece, and you're going to plug it into f. So f of g of x will be f of g of x. Well, g of x will be replaced with x squared plus 1. So now this is what we're going to input into f. So that would be equal to x minus 1. So I put parentheses for x and then x plus 1. And x is replaced with g, which is x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1. And then the rest is simplifying this. So remove the parentheses, x squared plus 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1 plus 1, which simplifies to, uh, so the ones will cancel on top, you have x squared, and on the bottom you get x squared plus 2. So that's the composition for f of g of x. Okay, Lisa, do you have any questions on this? No, I, I get it. But I was saying, like, you could do the same thing with, like, f of f. Like that? Yes. Yeah, so we can also do that. So let's do this one. Let's call this a star part, okay? So take the same function, or you want me to create a new function? Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's use the same function. So you want to do f into f. So, well, take f, which is x minus 1 over x plus 1. So we are doing f of f of x. So I'm going to plug in f of f of x. Well, f of x is x minus 1 over x plus 1. And then you're going to insert that into f again. So that's going to be, again, x minus 1 over x plus 1. Well, x is replaced with f, which is x minus 1 over x plus 1. x minus 1 over x plus 1. So that's how it looks like. But now we have to do some heavy work to simplify this. So I can freely remove the parentheses. So on top we have x minus 1 over x plus 1 minus 1. And on the bottom we have x minus 1 over x plus 1 plus 1. Okay. And now again you have to do the common denominator stuff for the top and the bottom. So for the top, I'm going to write 1 as a fraction, multiply by its LCD, x plus 1 over x plus 1. So that will give me the top fraction to have x minus 1. And I'm going to join the fraction, so that's minus x plus 1 over the same denominator, x plus 1. And on the bottom, we do the same thing, write it as over 1, and multiply with x plus 1 over x plus 1. So then we have, again, combine the fractions. We have x minus 1 plus 1 times x plus 1 over x plus 1. And now we have some simplifications to do. So on top, I can distribute this negative 1. So I have x minus 1 minus x minus 1 over x plus 1. And on the bottom, we have x minus 1, distribute positive 1, which is the same thing plus x plus 1 over x plus 1. And now we can combine more. So on top, I can cancel out these x's, and then I have negative 2 left over x plus 1 over, on the bottom fraction, uh, looks like negative 1 and 1 cancels. So we're left with 2x over x plus 1. And now we can do the kip flip change. So we have negative 2 over x plus 1, times x plus 1 over 2x. And these factors, they're identical, cancel them out. And then the 2s, I can also cancel them out too. So I have negative 1 on top over x. Oh, that's really nice at the end. So yeah, these are the work you have to do when you're simplifying these kind of fractions. Does that answer your question, Lisette? Yes, thank you. All right. No problem. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, any other questions from you guys? A 
Okay, so this was the question from quiz nine, where you're given a central angle of 60 degree and the radius of three meters, and you want to find the area of the sector. So if you want, you can draw a picture, but you don't have to, you can just plug everything into your formula. But before you do that, you must convert degrees into radians, because that's how the formula works. The units must be in radians for the angle. So we know the area of a sector is one half r square theta. And we know theta is in radians, okay? So you're given the central angle, which is 60, and r is three, so we just plug everything in, but before we convert this. So what's 60 degree in radians? How do we convert? Let's, let's review that. It's pi over three. Right, it's pi over three. So we do pi over 180. That's the conversion factor. And this gives us pi over three. Perfect. So that's the theta we're going to substitute. And r is three. So we have area is equal to one half r squared, which is three squared times theta. That's pi over three. And then you can simplify this. So we have nine over three, three squared is nine, and I can cancel that out with three. So what we really have is three pi over two. So that's how much area of the sector is. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, no problem. All right, so let's, let's do some questions for uh, finding the reference angle. So we'll do some degrees and then we'll do some radians. So let's find the reference angle. So A, let's do negative 220 degree. B, Let's do um, five pi over four. And C, let's do 310 degree. And then um, let's do negative 45 degree. Okay, so here are a couple questions where you just wanna find the reference angle. So let me give you a couple of seconds just to, um, you know, read stare at them and see what your ideas are, and then we'll start in a couple of seconds. Okay, so hopefully you have some thoughts for each of these. So for the first one, because it's a negative angle, you could do go clockwise and draw the angle, find its reference angle, but I would suggest you to find its coterminal angle and then find its reference angle so that you can really use the rules we wrote down in class. So for negative angle, I want to bring this angle between 0 and 360. So can someone tell me what will be the coterminal angle for negative 220? It will be 140 because you add 360 to it. So if I do 360, well, um, Tell me one more time, 140, was it? Yeah. Okay. So if you do plus 360 to this, you get the reference angle, which would be 140 degree. So we're gonna work with 140, draw where it's located, and then find its reference angle. 140 is located right here. to so somewhere in the fourth, um, second quadrant. This is 140. So what is the reference angle for this? What's the rule? You subtract it from 180. Right. So the rule for the second quadrant, since um, different color right here, since this is the reference angle, we need to do 180 minus 140. That would be our reference angle. So this is 40 degree. Okay. Nice. All right. What about the next one? Now for the next one, we don't
don't really know how much the measure is, but you can convert it to a degrees, find out. But I would say don't do that. Try to rewrite using radians. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the angle. So let's divide 5 by 4. So 4 goes into 5 one time. So we can write it as 4 pi over 4 with the remainder of 1 pi over 4. So I'm just rewriting, okay? And then 4 over 4, that's 1. So we have pi plus pi over 4. So that's the measure you should know. You know pi, how much that is, 180. And pi over 4, you should also know how much that is. That's 45. So we're going to sketch 180 and 45. That will be the picture for 5 pi over 4. So 180 is right here. And then pi over 4 is right here. So that is 5 pi over 4. So what is the reference angle? So the reference angle is this piece right here. That's your reference angle. So how do we find that piece? Well, if you notice, we already know that piece, don't we? Forty-five, right? Yeah, because we 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 added pi, and then we went a little bit more, which is pi over four. So that's actually the reference angle if you're on the third quadrant. So when you rewrite, the reference angle kind of stares at you. But uh, if you don't rewrite and if you just, okay, five pi over four, let's draw it and then find the reference angle using the rule. So using the rule, the reference angle is you take the data, which is five pi over four, and you subtract away pi. And then again, using common denominators, we, we get pi over four. So you could do it this way if you didn't realize that when you rewrite, the reference angle is there, but it's okay. You can still follow the rule and get the same answer. Any questions so far? All right, uh, moving on to part C. So let's draw since it's in degree and sits in between zero and um, 360, we don't need coterminal. We can go ahead and start drawing 310 lies on this quadrant. So that's 310 degree. So the reference angle is the angle coming from the x-axis to the terminal side. That's the reference angle. So how do we find this angle? 360 minus 310. Mm -hmm. There Which you have it. Mm -hmm. 50. 50, yep. Yeah. So there you go. 50 degree is the reference for 310. And the last one, now again, because it's negative, we're going to find its coterminal. So add 360 to it. What do you get? 345. Three, 345. Wait, let me. Uh, it should be 350. I think it's 315, no? Yeah, it's 315. 315, okay, thanks. All right, so negative 45 is exactly the same as 315 because they're coterminal. So that's the angle we're going to sketch. 315 is, again, on the fourth quadrant right here. This is 315 degree. So what's the reference angle? Well, the reference is from here to here. That is our reference angle. So the rule on the fourth quadrant is to do 360 take away 315. And how much is that? 45. Yeah. 45. There we go. So that's how we find reference angle. Now let's do another one, right? Let's do um, part E. Again, find the reference angle. No, let me uh, let me see if I can come up with something better. So, what if we want to find the reference angle for, let's say, um, seventeen? No, let's do um, nineteen. Uh, no, let's do um, 
13. 13 pi over um, 4. Uh, no, 3. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just deciding which works better. Okay. 13 pi over 3. Now, this is a big angle. So we might want to work with its coterminal. But again, like I said, with radians, it's so much easier if you just rewrite the angle and then just pick up the little pieces that you know the measure of. So can someone tell me, how can I rewrite this? So, so the way I'm going to do it is to divide 13 by 3, okay? So 13 goes, 3 goes into 13 how many times? Four times. Four, right? And then we have a remainder. So we have 12 pi over 3, because that will give me 4 pi, plus how much remainder? Well, just pi over 3. That's the remainder. So we have a 4 pi plus pi over 3. Now, 4 pi, let's write that as a cycle of 2 pi. So we have a 2 pi plus 2 pi plus pi over 3. Now, what do we say about 2 pi is equivalent to? Zero. Zero. So we have 0, 0. So 13 pi over 3 has the same terminal side as pi over 3. Check this out. So here's how 13 pi over 3 looks like. We have one cycle, that's 2 pi, back to 0. Another cycle, 4 pi, back to 0. Pi over 3. Now, how big is pi over 3? That's... 60. So we're just going to go a little bit more. So there you go. <coughs> so every time you went around 2 pi, you're back to 0. So the angle that we're really working with is pi over 3. So this is the angle we're working with. So what's the reference angle for this angle? It's the data, right? Yeah, it's the angle itself because it's in the first quadrant and it's already between zero to 90 and it's forming by the positive x-axis and terminal side. So the reference angle is theta itself, pi over three. So we didn't really have to do any work other than just rewriting the angle and knowing that two pi is equivalent to zero. So you can drop every two pi and then draw the rest. Okay. So any questions on this? Right. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Now, last time we, uh, we also worked on exact values. Do you guys want to do something for that? Um, can we also do a few on that? Yeah, okay, so let's do that. So, um, so let me see if I can pull out one from the past final. So let's, let's revisit spring 2018. I think that final has few questions on that. So let's go back to that. Um, okay, so here's spring 2018. So this has, let me share it with you. Okay, so, um, okay, so we can do, so number eight is related to what we did in chapter five, and then, we're, okay, so 17 evaluating trick, uh, cosine of negative two tenths, so we can do that one. So let's do 17. So we want to find the exact value for cosine of 210, negative. So again, for negative angles, you always want to use coterminal, so that way it's easier to evaluate. So let's take a look at this. So first thing you want to do is draw the angle. So negative 210, I'm going to find its coterminal. So this is from spring 
2018. So the coterminal angle is going to be negative 210 plus 360, which is what? Did we do this? I can't remember. 150. 150. 150. We did one, like, like we did sine. We did sine negative 210. Oh, okay. All right. So we didn't do cosine. Good. So, well, now we know where 150 is. 150 is right here. That's 150. This is 150. So we want to know what the reference angle is, and then we're going to create our triangle. So what is the reference angle for 150? 30. 30. So now we create our right triangle for 30, 60. 30 degrees, 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so remember, so you guys remember the triangles? 30 and 60, 30, 60. Why is it 30? Why got 30? So for the second quadrant, for the reference angle, we do 180 wow. minus, uh-huh, and oh, that's yeah. 30, yeah. Okay, so let's fill in this triangle and then we'll just copy it on the XY plane. So what, what are the sides, what are the lengths of this triangle? Uh, the hypotenuse would be um, two. Mm -hmm. uh, the adjacent of uh, 60 degrees would be uh, one. Well and uh, the other one is radical three. Um, adjacent of 60 degree is one. So that's one. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's the triangle we're working with. So across from 30, is one, and then this is two, this is square root of three. So cosine by definition is opposite, sorry, what the heck, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, so let's rewrite this. So cosine of negative 210 is equal to plus or minus cosine of its reference angle. So we found the reference angle, which is, uh, 30 degrees, so we have plus and minus cosine of 30 degree. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now you have two ways you can determine the sine plus or minus. You can give the sign to the triangle you drew, or you can use ASTC to figure out the sign. Now because we're looking at cosine and second quadrant only sine is positive, we're going to choose the negative sign. So therefore we have negative cosine of 30. And hey, Professor, I have a question. Sure. Could you explain this, um, the SATC? Because I couldn't, I didn't understand it in the lecture as well. Okay, I will, I will do that. So we, we usually remember the sign for trigonometric functions by this acronym ASTC, where A stands for all trig functions are positive. So if you have sine on the first quadrant, tangent, cosine, everything is positive on the first quadrant because your x is positive, your y is positive, so everything is nice. Once you head beyond the first quadrant, then it switches because x and y's are gonna be negative. Second quadrant, this is negative x, we still have positive y, so therefore only sine and cosecant is positive because sine is the y value of a, a function. So therefore, sine is positive because you're in the positive y direction. And then on the third quadrant, tangent is positive and it's reciprocal, which is cotangent. They're positive, meaning everything else will get a negative sign. Now, why is that? Because here on the third quadrant, you're on the negative x direction and you're also on the negative y direction. So if you have um, sine or cosine, they're both gonna be negative because your x is negative, your y is negative. But tangent is the ratio of sine and cosine, so double negative makes tangent positive. So that's what the T stands for. And lastly, C, cosine and secant are positive. Why is that? Because cosine represents the x-coordinate of a point 
and this is the positive x direction and everything else is negative because of the negative y okay does that make sense yes thank you so much no what? problem okay so back to where we were so we were negative cosine 30 so looking at the triangle cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so our adjacent from the triangle we have this is adjacent this is hypotenuse this is opposite so we have negative square root of 3 over 2 so that is the exact value for cosine of negative 210 now let's do one more just to uh, add more flavors to this. So find, um, let's do, let's do um, tangent of five pi over six. Yeah, we can do this. Okay, so first thing you want to do is draw the angle, find its reference angle, and then figure out which, um, which trig value is the reference angle. So 5 pi over 6, so I'm just going to rewrite what is 5 pi over 6 is. So of course 6 doesn't divide 5 but I can still separate five by using numbers two and three because those are factors of six. So rewrite as a three pi over six plus two pi over six because that is five pi over six. And now simplify them. So three pi over six, that's pi over two and two pi over six, that's pi over three. Okay, now these should be familiar measure pi over 2, that's 90, pi over 3, that's 60. Okay, so we're going to draw 90 and a 60, and that's our 5 pi over 6. So here's our xy plane. 90 is right here. Pi over 3, that's just a little bit more. There you go. So we are going to create a right triangle right there. So what is the reference angle? This is 5 pi over 6. The reference angle is the inner angle of that this one up oh, 30 degrees right right 30 degree which is pi over six okay. so that's the reference angle so again across from 30 we are drawing the same triangle we draw here somehow it happens to be the same one um, I didn't make it up that way, but it just happened. So this is one, this is two, this is radical three. Okay, so now let's figure out what this is equal to. So tangent of five pi over six is equal to plus and minus tangent of its reference angle. So we're gonna figure out plus and minus from ASTC. So ASTC, right? S meaning only sine and cosecant are positive, meaning tangent will get a negative sign. So negative tangent of reference angle, which is 30 pi over six. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? So this is our opposite, this is our adjacent, and hypotenuse. So we have negative opposite one over radical three so that will be tangent of 30 degree now and if, professor, yeah. yeah go ahead what if you want to rationalize it so that would be negative root three over three thank you mm -hmm. so any of these are fine so there you go um yeah right somehow both of these ended up on the second quadrant okay let's do something more let's do one more okay well let me know if you guys have any questions on this before I write another example. Any questions? Yeah. I was going to ask you, uh, can we use a calculator in the final? No, no calculator. Okay, and also, is it going to be on Blackboard or WebAssign? It's going to be on WebAssign. WebAssign? Yeah. Wait, the final is going to be on WebAssign? Yeah. 
Oh, I thought you said black. No, I okay, thank you. I, I didn't say black, but I said I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's do. How about the number of the questions? Is it 20 or more? Well, that I still don't know, but I assume it's going to be 20 plus. And how will we find the quiz on WebAssign? Quiz on WebAssign? I mean the exam, the final. Sorry. Oh, it will open up on December 17th at 3.30 or maybe a minute or two before. It will be like under like where the homeworks are? Yep, absolutely. It's going to say final and you'll click on it. It will open up the question file. Okay, so... Um, Let's do another one. Let's do, um, let's find uh, exact value for, let's find, uh, let's do secant. Secant of five pi over three. So try this one. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about and just jot down any thoughts you have. Okay. So let's, let's rewrite the angle. So five pi over three, well, again, five is divisible by three, so I can write this as three pi over three, um, and then two pi over three. So three pi over three, that's just pi, and two pi, again, if you're not sure how big two pi over three is, split it up one more time. You can do one pi over three plus one pi over three. So that's two pi over three. So how much is this? Well, we have 180 pi over three, that's about 60. And then this is another 60. So we're doing 180 plus a 60 plus a 60. So that's how much we're going to draw. So here's our x, y plane. 180 is right here. 60 is right here. And 60 is a little bit beyond 270. So that's the angle measure for um, 5 pi over 3. So this is 5 pi over 3. So let's create our right triangle and find its reference angle. So here's our right triangle. Such a weird triangle. Sorry, guys. Can draw. So good. Okay. So what is the reference angle? So that's the reference angle. So we're going to do two pi, which is 360, minus five pi over three. And that would give us pi over three. So the reference angle is pi over three, which is 60 degree in radians, okay? So, so fill in the rest. What are the sides of this? Uh, triangle. So we're drawing 60, 30. So this is one, this is two, this is square root of three. That's the triangle we're drawing. Now secant is, so secant of five pi over three is equal to plus and minus secant of its reference angle. So now secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Now in the fourth quadrant, is it positive or negative? Negative. Okay, let's check. So A, S, T, C, right? All students take classes. C, what does C represent? C is uh, for cosine and secant. Positive. That's what C represents. So we're actually going to take the positive one. Do you see why? Yeah. Okay. So we have positive secant of reference angle, which is pi over three. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine. 
So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, then secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So here's our right triangle. And across from pi over three, we have opposite. This is adjacent and hypotenuse. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So this is two over one, or you can simply say two. So that will be the secant of pi over three. Any questions on this? All right, so we, we did plenty of example on exact values. So let me know if you have questions on another topic or if you want me to do more trigonometric stuff. Okay, so any questions from anyone? Um, no, can we go back to the, the final from 2018 and look at some of the questions from there? Sure. So let's, let's do that. So going back to spring 2018 final. So let's, um, let's pull it up. So here's the spring 2018 final. So, um, so let's just skim through these questions you have the uh, first one where you want to solve for W. So that's a linear equation. Nothing too crazy, right? You can start off by multiplying both sides by seven to get rid of the fraction, or you can just go ahead and distribute two seven to W minus three and then go from there. So let me know which question you guys want me to show work for since there are plenty of questions here and that's pretty a good place to start reviewing. So anything that interests you guys, that you want to see how it's done? Oh, can we do um, find number 10? Find an equation of the line passing through that point and perpendicular. Okay, so let's do number 10 from here. So I'm just gonna crop it to my one note. So this is something we did in the past. I believe it was a prerequisite section or some chapter one, I can't remember right now, but it's one of those that we did in a while ago. So we want to find an equation of the line passing through the points one negative two and perpendicular to the line x plus two y equals six. Well, perpendicular means there, two lines share a slope of negative reciprocal. So we need to borrow the slope from this line and then we're going to negate it and reciprocate the slope. So to find the slope, we're going to write this in y equal mx plus b form. So we're gonna subtract six from both sides. So you have two y is equal to negative x plus six and then divide by two on both sides. So you have y is equal to minus one half x plus three. So what we want is the slope. So that is the m of this line. So our perpendicular slope is going to be negative reciprocal. So that's negative, negative two. So you're negating it and you're reciprocating one half, which is two. So the perpendicular slope is two. Well, now we have a point we can write out the equation of the line by using any form you like, either the point slope form or the slope intercept form or the standard form. But the simplest one is the point slope form. So we're gonna use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's the simplest one. So plug in your points. So let's call this one x1, y1, and the slope is two. So we have y minus negative two is equal to m, which is two, x minus one. And then just clearing out the double negative from the left side, we have y plus two is equal to two times x minus one. That's an acceptable answer. But if you wanna write it in slope intercept form, which is y equal mx plus b, 
you just continue working with this by distributing two on the right side and then subtract two. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have y plus two, so this is r, is equal to two x minus two by distributing two on the right side. And then I'm gonna subtract two to isolate y. So we have y equals two x minus four. So there you have the mx plus b form. Now, what if you want the standard form? Well, then you just move everything to one side and uh, all the coefficients has to be uh, whole numbers, which is in this case. So I'm just gonna move y to the right side and four to the left side. So in standard form, you would have um, four is equal to two x minus y. That would be standard form. So all of this is R. So any of these are fine. These are the three different ways we studied how to express an equation of a line. Right, so um, any questions on this? Um, can you scroll up a little bit so I could? Uh, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the final answer that we have to write in would be either of those, right? Yeah, any of these. Okay. But I would, oh. I would encourage you to use this one since it's simpler, unless the question specified which form. I want to take a picture of the uh, question. So. Okay. So. All right. Uh, yeah, so any other questions you guys would like to see? So we have a couple more minutes. We'll go over number eight. Number eight, okay. So let's, let's copy number eight. All right, so here's number eight, and it's worth four points. Oh, cool, okay. <laughs> so we're given a condition of theta, and we want to find cosine of theta from there. So we, we want to draw a right triangle on the specific quadrant, okay? So, so this is the quadrant you're gonna be drawing the right triangle. So here's our x, y plane. So we have zero degree. And then, okay, let me just make it a little bit bigger. We have zero degree, 90 degree, 180, 270, 360. So theta is greater than 90, and it's also less than 180. So meaning you're on this quadrant. That's where theta is. That's what that inequality means, okay? So I'm going to draw, so imagine a bow tie. So remember how I told you guys, every time you have these type of question, you wanna imagine a bow tie that looks like this. And these are the specific right triangle you're going to draw on that specific quadrant. So we're gonna be drawing this right triangle. So let's do that. So here is my right triangle. Theta is coming up from the origin, and here's the right angle. So we're given sine theta, which is two over nine. So across from theta is opposite, and then this is my hypotenuse, since sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we need to find out what this side is. So you have to use Pythagorean's theorem right, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we're missing one of the leg of the triangle. We have the hypotenuse, that's nine. So let's call it b is the x, two squared plus x squared. So can someone give me what is the value for x? So if I do this, um, let's see, four. Radical 77. Okay, that looks reasonable, right? You subtract four. Yep, so we get radical 77. All right, so x is equal to radical. So let me just erase that. 
So this is radical 77. Now, because you're on the negative x direction, you have to put a negative sign because you're on the negative x axis, okay? So we're looking for cosine theta. Well, by definition, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means adjacent to the theta we have is negative root 77 over hypotenuse, that's nine. So that's cosine theta. Now you can also check from ASTC that only sine is positive, meaning sine, well, sine and cosecant, right, are positive, which means every other trig functions, they're going to be negative. So it makes sense that the cosine we have is a negative value. So double check your work with both of these. So there you have the answer to this question. Make sense? Yeah, thank you. All right, cool. Any other question you guys would like to see? Number 12. 12, okay. So let's check what 12 is about. So number 12. Okay, so number 12, something we did a long time ago. I think that was the first thing we did when we started exponents. Uh huh. So let me just crop that question for you. So here's number 12 exponents. The laws of exponents, it's been a while since we saw it. Okay, so first thing you want to do is simplify, or you can distribute, it's up to you how you want to approach them. But really, remembering the laws of exponent is the key to this question. So, so for the first parentheses, there is nothing to do, right? The power is one. None of the terms are the same variable. So I'm just going to rewrite without the parentheses. So we have a to the 4, c squared over 4, b to the 4 times. Now the second one there's nothing to simplify inside the parentheses, so I'm just going to go ahead and distribute the power to every single term. So we have a to the third to the second power, that's a to the six, times b to the two to the second power, that's b to the four, over c to the sixth. Okay, now because it's multiplication, you can kind of connect the two fraction line, just make it a one fraction. And this is all multiplication. Okay, so now using more laws of exponents, we can combine them. So uh, let's see if I have like term. So it looks like a's a to the six and a to the sorry a to the four and a to the six. What can I do with their exponents? You add them. Right. So we keep the base, add the exponents. Ten. Now, for the C, well, let's go to B, right? Let's go in order. So I have a B to the 4 and B to the 4. Well, what can I do with their exponents? Subtract. Right, because they're dividing, so you subtract them. 4 minus 4 is 0, so the B disappears. Nice. Now we go to C. So we have a C to the 2 and C to the 6. Again, you have top and bottom, so you do top minus bottom. So you have c to the negative four, because you're doing two minus six. And you can see that the c will belong on the denominator because it's a negative power. And on the, on the bottom, we're still left with four. So I successfully finished applying the laws of exponents. Now you just need to turn any negative exponent to positive exponents. So the only one that will move is C because it has negative exponent. So we have A to the 10 over four remains on the bottom and C to the four. And that's simplified as positive exponent. Right, so that's number 12. Any questions on that? Um, I have a question. Sure. Um, so if we had like negatives in the bottom, right away which like we would put them up right in the numerator yep okay. Mm -hmm. yeah okay so i'm going to end the session here for today so those of you who came
great, you guys did well. I will be holding another review session tomorrow. So uh, it'll be from 12 to, I don't know, maybe two hours, two hours, 30 minutes, who knows how far we can go. But it'll be a longer review session, okay? So stop by tomorrow at 12 in Zoom. I'll post the Zoom meeting ID on Blackboard, that way you can access it from there. So another review session tomorrow, bring in questions that you have, try to work on spring 2018 completely, so that way you can finish and check your answers tomorrow with me. And hopefully it's helpful for you too. And if you have any other questions, bring them in. I'll be happy to work those out for you. Uh, where do you go to find this?